Uh, hi, everybody. Uh, thank you for uh, coming in and, and listening to my presentation. Uh, my name is uh, Simon Garcia de Gonzalo. I'm a researcher at Barcelona Supercomputing Center. And today I'm going to give you a brief overview of the BSC role in EPIC, as well as uh, going a little bit in more detail about a specific project, a uh, success, uh, success story uh, involving OMS2 uh, and OpenACC interoperation. So my presentation will go as follows. Uh, first, I will go over uh, an overview of the many different projects that the BSC is involved in within EPIC um, and, uh, and how everything comes together. Uh, then I will pick one of these many projects and I'll go uh, in a little bit more detail uh, discussing uh, more of the technical aspect of this, of this project as, as well as some really good results that we got. Um, and finally, I'll, I'll acknowledge uh, the people involved uh, in, in, the, in the work that I'm going to be presenting today. Um, so with that, uh, we can go ahead and get started. So uh, at this point, uh, many of you might be familiar with this image. Um, so this is kind of uh, one way of showing the many different moving pieces within EPIC. Um, so all the different gears, uh, everything kind of uh, um, works together to, to make EPIC work. Uh, so there are many different aspects to, to what EPIC is. So when looking at where does the Barcelona Supercomputing Center falls within EPIC, um, it, what you see is that we essentially are working on almost every single aspect within EPIC, uh, from performance tools to guided code generation and, and, and everything else. And the things that we're not directly involved um, you can see that we are adjacently involved in them uh, very much in, uh, in, in a high effort way. So if we look at each one of these in more detail, we see more specific projects that we are working on in each particular area. So we are looking at it uh, using a clockwise. Um, the first thing you want to point is performance tools where we are working on supporting GASPI and OpenACC uh, performance tools in Estrella and Paraver. Uh, we are also then working on uh, the integration of OMS and GPI. Uh, and then below we have in distributed shared memory backend is the work being done where we have Argo DSM, where it's being built on top of what we have as OMS at cluster. Um, share memory programming models. Uh, we have a number of different projects, one Eco HMEM, which deal with memory placement in a heterogeneous memory environment, which is becoming very common nowadays in, in exascale machines. Um, better support for languages such as Fortran and C++ for OMS. Energy aware scheduling, if you want to be energy conscious and where you get the most energy out of your, uh, the least amount of energy expenditure. Um, when running a pro, uh, running a, an application, and also heterogeneous memory management when you have now different pieces, uh, accelerators now, how do you move data back and forth? Um, and also then at the end, guided cogeneration where we're dealing with OMS plus uh, OpenACC or OMS plus OpenMP, um, and uh, sometimes OMS uh, taskifying something in, in within an accelerator um, and also, with this also involves some of these Fortran and C++ OMS optimizations that I, I briefly discussed. So because this is a single presentation and I cannot go into detail about everything we're working on, uh, what I have decided to do is to pick one uh, on, of, the many, uh, of the many projects that we're working on and give you a more detailed overview of that. Um, one of our many success stories that we have here at EPIC. So for this, um, I'll concentrate on three of the gears um, that all are touching each other. So they're all very important to each other. Um, and so in the guided code generation, I'll be discussing this OMS plus OpenACC work, uh, which is the title of the presentation. This also involves heterogeneous memory management to make this work. Uh, and of course, now we need an application to use the tools that we're, that we're developing. And for that purpose, uh, we're going to be using the CPIC application, uh, which is being developed at uh, Inesc ID Lisboa, one of our of the partners here at EPIC. So with that, um, let me let me continue the presentation uh, that deals with very specific uh, uh, a very specific project. Um, the, essentially, is this project deals with 
trying to enhance the productivity and performance uh, by merging and interoperating OMS2 and OpenACC. So what we want is an easier way for application programmers to be able to target these very difficult, very complex machines uh, from a high level way by merging two very useful tools. So the motivation and challenges of this work are very straightforward, really. Um, so OpenACC and OMS2 have very nice capabilities that, that are the reasons why people use them. So OpenACC allows you to write code that will target open, uh, that will target devices by still keeping it within high level. So you don't have to write low-level code such as CUDA or OpenCL. And this, the, uh, this increases uh, portability and programmability um, uh, when using them. Um, however, uh, when things start to break down or things become more difficult in OpenACC, if you want to use asynchronous execution uh, for either a single GPU or multiple GPU system, and the reason be uh, the reason why things become more difficult is that everything is is up to the programmer. Now, the the whoever is writing the application has to now. Um, manually uh, manage asynchronous regions and asynchronous queues and the dependencies across these things have to be managed by the programmer and this could lead to a number of different uh, bugs and errors and, and, and headaches frankly. Um, so that's where OMS2 comes in. So OMS2 is, was made to facilitate a, a programmer uh, using task-based methods. So in OMS2, everything is considered to be an asynchronous task by design. Everything is asynchronous. And the dependencies across asynchronous tasks are automatically uh, taken care of by the runtime. However, where OMS2 is lacking is the ability to target accelerators um, in the same way as OpenACC does from a high level way using abstractions. So um, that's when the goal here was, what happens if we, if we merge OMS2 and OpenACC we get the benefit from both systems. So we get the increased portability and programmability productivity from OpenACC. Uh, and all the asynchronous complexity goes away because now all of that will be taken care of by the OMS runtime. Um, and so all the dependencies are, are, are done automatically. However, uh, of course, this is easier said than done um, because there are many challenges involved in this project. So uh, first of all, both uh, both different programming uh, models are agnostic to each other, which essentially means that they don't know about each other. So how can they cooperate in the first place? Uh, also, what about division of responsibilities? Um, some, so what model is in charge of doing what? And sometimes this is easy, sometimes it's more complex. So um, sometimes models have, have the ability to do the same thing. So which model should be doing uh, that thing? So for example, memory transfer. Now, program composition, um, how do you write a program from the ground up using this interoperation? Does it change how you compose a program or, or, or not? And of course, limits one model imposes on the other. Can you use the full spectrum of OpenACC pragmas when using this interoperation or not? Is there some limitation that you have to, to consider? So to, for us to, to make this work, the first thing we needed to consider is how do we go from this agnostic, uh, this agnostic system where OMS2 and OpenACC don't know about each other to something more meaningful? So for that, what we proposed was this master-slave master dynamic where um, essentially one of the models, in this case, OMS2 would be the dominant, mo the dominant model responsible for orchestrating the program execution, while OpenACC would be the subservient model uh, which will be used to uh, for a specific uh, objective, which is to accelerate uh, kernels uh, on devices specifically. Um, so you can think of it this in a way as OMS2 is, is aware of OpenACC, but OpenACC still not aware of OMS2. Now, what this means in terms of responsibility, separation of responsibilities, is that, uh, again, the device kernel execution is the only responsibility is OpenACC. OpenACC is responsible for this only. Uh, what about data movement is something that we kind of mentioned briefly before. Um, so open, uh, so for data movement, what we decided was to give that responsibility to um, the unified memory abstraction layer that can be enabled using OpenACC. So in the compiler, 
you can enable this by adding a specific flag. And what's going to happen is that if you are computing something on a GPU, the memory will automatically move uh, to the specific device where the computation is taking place. Um, this comes with extra number of, um, of things you have to consider when, when scheduling work that will be translated to OMS, and I will discuss this in a bit. And finally, uh, host and device work scheduling uh, is a responsibility solely on OMS2. Uh, it's going to be responsible of saying where things are going to run in, in the CPU and the GPU, and if you have multiple GPUs, which GPU should be running the, the execution. So the image on the right is essentially a way of, of showing uh, pictorially what we're discussing. An application can be broken down into many asynchronous OMS tasks, and these OMS tasks within themselves could have open ACC kernels that have to be launched asynchronously. So uh, let's talk about the how the interoperation implementation is actually done. So um, here is how do we um, make OMS to talk to open ACC? Uh, and for that, what we decided was we created uh, something called an OMS2 device tasks. And these device tasks form a one-to-one -one mapping to OpenACC asynchronous queues. So for people who are not um, familiar, OpenACC asynchronous queues is how OpenACC exposes asynchronous computation to the programmer. Um, so now what we have is that OMS2 has a specific uh, model that maps directly to the asynchronous capabilities of OpenACC, and this is a one-to-one -one mapping. Now, some people, so there's another thing that is worth mentioning here is that if you are familiar with how OpenACC works, sometimes you want to put two things or two different computation on the same queue. And the reason for this is that you want to have a, an order of execution. You want to force an order of execution. Um, we don't have that uh that issue here using OMS plus OpenACC uh, because uh, works dependencies or um, essentially execution doesn't get a release or doesn't get executed until dependencies are met. So you can put work in different queues and still have the order of execution you want because uh, the dependencies are being met automatically. Um, so uh, this is essentially kind of in the high level way of how things are getting mapped uh, from OMS2 to OpenACC queues. Now, this also involves some compiler uh, changes that we needed to do to Mercurium, which is the compiler for OMS2. Um, so uh, the point here is to make the life of the programmer easier, not, not more difficult. So there's a number of automatic things that we needed to do to the code for things to work. Um, so the first thing we do is we needed to detect OpenACC pragmas um, and then determine if this pragma is, is a candidate for asynchronous execution. And if it is, we needed to add, uh, we needed to essentially annotate it using asynchronous uh, uh, language or asynchronous clauses in OpenACC automatically. Um, then uh, this involves having to decide uh, in, what, uh, in what queue is this gonna run, in what GPU and in what asynchronous queue this is gonna run. So this is going to be done automatically by the runtime. So this is a, a variable that has to be moved forward and pass into the OpenACC runtime. So all of that has to be done automatically as well. And then what happens when you have cases where things have to execute um, on the spot? So you don't want to be asynchronous. You want to be synchronous and immediately. So I have an example here on, on, on the right where listing one is the original code, something that the, any programmer will write is very simplistic. You have a function foo takes two arguments, and this uh, computation then gets uh, added a pragma ACC parallel that it says that this computation has to be done in parallel and on the GPU. Uh, what happens is that we, we will automatically modify the code to look like listing two. Um, so the first thing you want to notice here is that we have an extra argument to the function uh, called asynchronous QID. This is something that the runtime is going to provide to the function automatically. Um, then the OpenACC parallel gets appended an asynchronous uh, clause, and this asynchronous QID gets passed into it. Um, and what this is doing is that now this A plus A equals A plus B is becoming, uh, we are transforming it to be an asynchronous execution. Um, now, right below it, you have what happens if the asynchronous ID is zero. Uh, what we do is that we are forcing a synchronization. 
So in order for, for all of these to work, we needed to do some compiler changes. Um, and, and what the compiler changes needed to do was to first detect existing OpenACC pragmas that were in the code of the, or the application. And we needed to automatically make them asynchronous. And for that, we needed to append uh, for to the correct pragmas, we needed to append the asynchronous clause to them. We needed to propagate uh, some runtime control variable that will dictate into what asynchronous queue is it going to run and into what GPU that is going to run later. And what happens on the cases where you want something to run uh, not asynchronously, but synchronously. Um, so you want that to run immediately and not wait um, uh, like, uh, like other computation. So, um, so I have an example on the right. So listing one would be the original code that you would write as a programmer. Um, it's fairly simple. It's kind of an example piece of code. So you have a, a, a foo function, and this foo function is annotated as a open uh, as an OMS task um, device, open ACC. And within it, um, it takes two arguments, A and B, and then the, you are going to do some computation. This computation is meant to run on uh, is meant to run parallel parallelly on the GPU. So this code will be taken in and will use some compiler changes to transform it to the following piece of code in listing two. So you have uh, an extra argument that is being passed into the function. This is asynchronous QID. And then this asynchronous QID um, is passed into the OpenACC pragma right below it. So now you have a pragma OpenACC or a pragma ACC parallel asynchronous asynchronous QID. And then the computation, uh, which essentially transform this computation to be asynchronous. Now, right below that, you see an if statement that says, what happens if the Q equals equals zero? Um, and, and what happens in that case is that we are forcing a synchronization. So we're doing, we're saying ACC, you need to wait on this spot until everything has been computed. And this is essentially how we deal with synchronous execution. So we reserve the Q zero to be synchronous. So anything that will be scheduled on um, Q0 will run uh, immediately upon, upon, um, uh, upon a scheduling. Um, and then what happens in the runtime is what happens in listing three, which is a wrapper for the function foo that gets, that gets called within the OMS2 runtime. So you see that the OMS2 runtime or is, a, is a wrapper function, which essentially is gonna first figure out what is the asynchronous QID that needs to be passed into the function. And it does so by calling some internal functions. And then using this asynchronous QID to pass to, the, to our modified full function. Uh, and this is kind of like a brief overview of what the compiler changes are, are happening uh, underneath to make things uh, automatically asynchronous. So this also brings an interesting question about affinity. So uh, what happens if you have multiple GPUs? How do you spread work across multiple GPUs um, and, and, and do it well? And the reason why this is not easy is because of a, a decision that we made, um, and I mentioned uh, sometime a few slides ago, which was the responsibility of moving memory back and forth across all devices and CPUs and GPUs was a unified memory model. Um, this is this is done automatically, which improves programmability. Um, however, uh, this can be very performance uh, had, could be a performance issue if not done well. So for this reason, what we developed was um, a new API that would allow uh, programmers to create some type of affinity to a device. So when you allocate memory, you can also take the opportunity to say this memory has an affinity to a specific device. So whenever you're executing code, um, if it has a, an affinity for a specific device, execute it there. Um, so these are two ways, one you allocate and you, of course, you need to have a specific API to deallocate the, the memory. Um, and, in, and another thing to point out here is that the device number that you see in the allocation uh, API is logical. So it's not, you don't have to change this depending on the devices you have. You could have device number 100 and it will still work. Uh, it will just figure out into what things, uh, into what into what works within the system. Um, and then execution is done with locality in mind. 
So programmability, what about programmability? So this is an important question because uh, one of the goals of, of this project is to make things easier for the programmer to write um, and doing a lot of things for them automatically. So for that, um, I'm showing an example in the next slide in here where I'm comparing the same, the same code, but written in two different ways. One is completely done using OpenACC and uh, an OpenACC way of exposing asynchronous execution. And on the right, you have this interoperation of OMS2 at OpenACC. And uh, you, anything that is done uh, marking red is something uh, additional to that version that is not found on the other version. And anything on blue is something you can find on both versions, but is slightly different. Um, so let's start from the top bottom, uh, from top to bottom. Uh, the first thing you want to notice is that for the OMS at OpenACC, you need to mark the, the function as an OpenACC, as an, sorry, as an OMS to tasks um, and, make, uh, and marking it also as an OpenACC device task and you give it dependencies in and out. Uh, after that, uh, you have the SACSV code uh, with nothing much the same thing. Now on the left, OpenACC doesn't have this need to mark the function as a, as a task but it does need to have um, add, need to pass an extra argument to the SACSV function, which is uh, a queue number. So uh, a queue that will then be passed to the OpenACC parallel loop async queue. Um, now, if you look at the other side, OMS2 at OpenACC, you have nothing, none of that. So SACSV only takes the arguments that are going to be used for the computation, nothing more, nothing less. You have the Pragma OpenACC parallel loop, nothing asynchronous need to be added. You don't need to pass the QID, all of that will be done automatically for you. And you have the computation. Now, when we look at the at the, at the main function, the thing that we'll call the SACSV function, um, things are fairly the same until first we encounter the allocation. Um, OpenACC is using the regular malloc to allocate memory on the devices, sorry, to allocate, to allocate memory. Um, and then on the on the right, OMS is using this affinity allocator where we're saying allocate this memory, but also give it a specific affinity to a specific device when allocating. Uh, then we initialize everything and then we are going to do the execution. And here's where the real benefit, um, uh, you, you can really see the, the benefit of, of this interoperation. So on the OpenACC side, when you start want to run things on multiple GPUs, on multiple asynchronous queues, what you need to do is first, you need to loop through every device. Now you need to set the device. And you, the reason why you need to set the device is that there is a, con, uh, there is a concept of context, device context, um, that keeps things straight across different GPUs. So you need to make sure you set the, the correct GPU. Now you need to loop through all the queues that you want to use and then call the function using every queue on different devices. Um, and then, but now when we go to the OMS2 and OpenACC side, we see that we don't need to do any of that. What we can do is says, look through all our devices, execute SACSV and nothing more. You don't need to set the device that's done automatically. You don't need to look through any of the queues because that is decided automatically. Um, and, and it cleans up the code quite nicely. Um, then on the other side is that what happens if you want to synchronize? So this is the other aspect is you want to make sure things are, are done executing and you before you move on with your computation. On the OpenACC side, you need to essentially repeat what we saw above again. So you look through every device, look through, you set the device, look through every queue, and you have to wait on that queue before moving on. On the OMS plus OpenACC side, you don't have, you don't need any of that code. The only thing you do is you set, you set to the OMS uh, runtime to wait at that point, and that will make sure that everything before it is done executing before moving on. So, a part of the goal of improving programmability um, is essentially uh, accomplished through this way. Um, this is also not showing more complex, uh, a more complex program um, that will require more complex synchronization. So this is kind of the easiest, more basic example, but the, the complexity can be much more than this. Um, so this also brings into, um, uh, into discussion about both synchronous versus data flow uh, execution. 
um, because some of this behavior can be accomplished by merging uh, OpenNP, which is another way of tasking an application, and OpenACC. However, this is not the same as I show you, because um, if you merge OpenMP plus OpenACC, what happens is that you have something called a bulk synchronous execution. So you have uh, a loop, and all these uh, all these uh, loop executions get taskified, um, and then everything will uh, across different GPUs, and then this will run asynchronously. However, at the end of every loop, every iteration of the loop, there is an uh, there is a, a barrier that will force synchronization. So there is, if there is load imbalance in the execution, what you're gonna see is that um, you're gonna see some idling time. The GPUs, some, some GPUs might finish before others, and they are gonna have to wait on the slowest GPU before moving on to the next uh, cycle. However, using OMS plus OpenACC, you don't have that. Um, and most of the benefit actually is from that. Uh, as soon as something is ready to execute, they are free to do so without having to wait on another on another device because of this uh, uh, because of these global barriers that you encounter on the um, OpenMP plus OpenACC side. Um, so that's why it's important to mention this. So what about results? So results uh, we for the evaluation of this project, what we did was uh, we used CIPIC, which is a two D electromagnetic particle in cell, one of the applications in the EPIC project developed by uh, INSC ID. And we run on two different clusters. One is the IBM AC992 cluster uh, and, a, and, a, and a DGX1. Uh, both have uh, multiple GPUs. Um, the DGX1 has eight GPUs, but we only scale up to four to make things equal. Uh, but the interesting thing, the, the interesting um, thing to mention about these two different clusters is the topology of them. So the IBM cluster has um, a very high bandwidth across pairs of GPUs. So if GPU um, one and two want to communicate, uh, they can be, it can be done so very fast. And also if it want, the CPU, one of the sockets wants to communicate with a pair of GPUs, it can be fast. However, if GPU wants, one wants to communicate with GPU four, then things um, become bottleneck by this middle uh, interconnect, which reduces the 150 gigabytes per second to 40 gigabytes per second, which becomes uh, basically a showstopper. Um, on the DGX machine, this is not the case. Um, the DGX machine has a topology, a cube topology. So every GPU is connected to every other GPU. So if GPU uh, um, zero wants to communicate with GPU three, it can, that, it can do so by going directly to it without having to go through a slow socket. However, the DGX1 um, doesn't have fast communication between CPU and GPU. So if you notice, uh, the, the IBM one has uh, 150 gigabytes per second between CPU and GPUs. However, the DGX1 has a rather, 30, a rather slow 32 gigabytes per second between CPU and GPU. So these are two different clusters made for very different types of application. Um, and let's see how how the how the OMS plus OpenACC handles this. So here are our results for multi GPU scaling. We have two different inputs to the CPIC application. One is more load balanced than the other, and we have the results for both systems uh, labeled either AC nine two two or DGX. Um, what you want to know notice is that scaling for both system is good. So we get good scaling and good performance improvement as we increase the GPUs for both systems using our, our, our tool. Um, there is some performance degradation when moving to three GPUs uh, for the ACC 922 system. And the reason is what I discussed previously is that whenever we move to three or four GPUs, the performance has to go through this low socket. Um, this is not the case for the uh, DGX system. So if you know the DGX system is con continually scales fairly well, doesn't drop with three GPUs like the ACC system. Um, however, the DGX scales slightly slower than the AC922. And the reason for this is because of the, there's still quite a bit of communication going back and forth between CPU and GPU and the, uh, ACC AC 92 cluster uh, benefit from that fast interconnect between CPU and GPU. But in overall, the performance is pretty good. The scaling is pretty good. 
compared to a, a baseline of pure open ACC code. Um, so, so, so we did also accomplish in the uh, performance productivity part of the of the goal. So, final thoughts on this project. Uh, well, uh, in terms of you know ab abstractions, applications, future work. Um, one thing to consider is can can the abstractions that we developed in this project be well defined, and can they be abstracted enough to combine any task based model with any data parallel model. So essentially creating a, a path forward to any type, uh, any type of combination um, that essentially supersedes uh, this project, supersedes EPIC, um, and it can be technology or, or a mechanism that can be used by, by my future research. Um, other future work that we can start from this point on is what about moving the responsibility of the management of memory uh, to OMS2 rather than the unified memory system? Uh, what about uh, three model interoperations? Because now we have we could have OMS plus OpenACC plus a low level CUDA if we want. Uh, what about end model interoperation and where you could have all kinds of different systems uh, working with each other and knowing about each other and uh, executing executing for the benefit of the programmers so to make their life easier for the programmers. And this brings me to the end of my presentation where I would like to acknowledge uh, a few people who have been uh, very much involved in the project that I discussed today. Um, so it's not just me, there's a list of people from both BSC and in the Sky D who have uh, worked really hard on this. Um, and and it is, is, is really shows um, the ability of cooperating across EPIC centers um, what can be accomplished. So everybody you can see here, I'm not gonna go into each individual one a person, um, but everybody here uh, contributed to this project uh, in, in a very meaningful way. Um, with that, I thank you for your time and attention. I hope you enjoy this talk. Um, and I think to point out is that OMS at OpenACC is currently available as part of the official OMS2 official uh, release. So if you're interested, you can go ahead and uh, you can go ahead and um, download it, play around with it. Um, documentation is ready to go. So, um, and if you have any questions about this, please uh, feel free to reach me at this um, at my email. With that, I, I thank you again, um, and I, I hope to hear from you.